Today we're talking about section 2.4. We're talking about average rates of change and instantaneous rates of change. So we're gonna be talking about how to find the slope of a curve. I want you to know that this is just kind of a lead in into chapter three. So this is kind of ending that limits unit, but it's going to head into unit three where we start talking about how to use derivatives to find instantaneous rates of change. So we're gonna talk about finding equations of tangent lines, normal lines, and average rate of change. So the first one, we start with average rates of change. And anytime you see this phrase, average rate of change, I want you to think this is algebra one slope. It's something you've been doing all the way back since algebra one. So when we find the average rate of change of this function over the interval from one to three, it means we need two ordered pairs. So that's the first thing I would do is figure out what my two ordered pairs are. Plug in one, one cubed minus one, and then plug in three. So three to the third is 27, minus three is 24. And then we do average rate of change. So 24 minus zero over three minus one. So we're talking change in y over change in x. We get 24 over two, or our average rate of change of 12. So when we find average rates of change, it's the same thing as finding the slope of what we call the secant line. So this particular function, that x cubed minus x, kind of looks like this type of a function. So 1, 0 to 3, 24. So we have found the slope of that line, the line that connects those two points. But when we want to talk about tangent to a curve, we want to talk about how do I find the slope at just this point or just this point. So we're talking the slope at one point. So we're no longer doing two points and average rates of change. So it says as we continue to make our change in x get smaller and smaller or approach zero, if I wanted to move this point closer and closer and closer until it gets right on top of this point we can find the slope of that tangent to the curve. So we're gonna do it the same way we did the average rate of change. We still have two ordered pairs, even though we're looking at one point. So we start with the point they give us, and then we just put a plus h. We're moving a little bit further away from it. We put the limit out front as that h goes to zero, and then we find the slope. So here, example two, find the slope of the parabola y equals x squared at the point two, four. So I wanna sketch a picture just so I have a visual of what this looks like in my head. So here's y equals x squared. And at the point two, four, we're trying to find the slope of this tangent line right here. So it's a pretty steep slope. Now it says, write an equation for the tangent line. There are two things we always need in order to write an equation. We need a point and we need a slope. So here we've got our point and all equations in this class should be written in point slope form because all you need is any point and a slope. So I'm halfway there, I've got the ordered pair, I just need to know the slope. So let's do this strategy. So it says to start at two, four, and now let's write our second ordered pair. So I want to do two plus some h value. We're moving a little bit away from f, or sorry, from x. So now if I plugged in two, I got two squared, which was four. So I need to know what do I get when I plug in two plus h? Well, we get two plus h squared. So now when I do the actual slope formula, I get y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. 
And according to our definition, we want to do the limit of this. So we want to know what is the limit of this as h goes to 0. As I start moving that extra point closer and closer until I have no change in x remaining. So notice these twos cancel out and I'm left with an h on the bottom. So if I plugged in 0 right now, we're saying that the change in x is 0. But I can't have a 0 on the bottom. So you're going to see some really fancy math work out here. So first off, I want you to FOIL this out. So we get 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 4. And all of that is over h. Sorry, my 10 is in the way there. So these 4s canceled out. And now you'll notice every single term that remains has an h in it. So I can cancel an h out of every single term. Goodbye, goodbye. There's still one left right there. So I've got the limit as h goes to 0 of 4 plus h. Now I can plug that 0 in. As that change in x goes to 0, I get an answer of 4. So that means the slope of x squared at 2 is 4. So I'm going to put my little note to myself. This was the slope. So now I have a slope, I have a point, and now I can write my equation. So y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And you can just leave your equation like this. Point slope is highly encouraged. All right, the top of the next page, they want you to do the same thing for this equation, 1 over x. It's going to take some common denominator work. So first thing I'd like you to do is set the problem up with the limits. So write your two ordered pairs. The first one is at a, and the second one is at a plus h. So go ahead and set that up. So I've got my two ordered pairs, and then I wrote my limit statement with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, I can make a note that these canceled each, other's out, each other out. So on the top, in order to simplify this, I have to use some common denominators. So this one I need to multiply by a over a. And this one I need to multiply by a plus h over a plus h. So go ahead and rewrite this and try to simplify and see what kind of an expression you get at the end of this limit. All right, so when I write it out, sorry, my over h ended up over here. And then I actually do this subtraction, a minus a plus h. So I get a minus a minus h. These a's cancel out. So I'm left with negative h over a times a plus h all over h. So these h's end up canceling out. So now I end up with limit as h goes to 0 of negative 1 over a times a plus h. And now I'm at a point where I can plug this 0 in. So a plus 0 is just a, so I get a times a, which is negative 1 over a squared. So now I can pick any a value and find the slope. So I could say, all right, what if I wanted to know the slope at 4? I could plug in 4. If I wanted to know the slope at 10, I could plug in 10 and figure out what the slope will equal. So now in part b, it says, where does the slope equal negative 1 fourth? So remind yourself here, this is the slope. So they're asking, where is negative 1 over a squared equal to negative 1 over 4? So this is the only part I really care about. So where is a squared equal to 4? And that's at plus.
plus or minus 2. So then part C says, what happens to the tangent to the curve at the point A, 1 over A, for the different values of A? So by looking at this, I want you to come up with what are some things you could tell me about the slope? What is going to be always true about the slope? And it's going to pop up a question here, and I want you to give me at least one thing that you know about the slope that will always be true. So some examples would be the slope is always negative because a squared will always be positive, so negative divided by a positive, always negative. It's super steep, near zero. Okay, so if I plug in super small numbers, this is going to make this a big number. But then conversely, if I plug in super big numbers, what's going to happen to this? It will approach zero as x moves to positive or negative infinity, as x gets bigger. All right, last but not least is the definition of a normal line. And anytime you see that phrase normal, all it means is perpendicular. So we do the process exactly the same way. The only difference is once I get my slope, I have to do the perpendicular slope. And to do perpendicular, we do the opposite reciprocal slope. So what I'd like you to do is you're going to find the slope of 4 minus x squared at x equals 1. So I'm going to have you do that on your own for a minute, please. So there's the work. You can pause it if you need to. But I got that the slope was negative 2. And they wanted an equation for the normal curve. So I know that I need the perpendicular slope here. So opposite reciprocal means that my new slope would be 1 half. And my ordered pair up here. When I plugged in 1, I got 3, so now I have a point, I have a slope, so now I just do my point-slope formula. So y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, and I can just leave it just like that.